What's good, Grey Gang? We're here on the lake, and we've not been out here in like, I don't know, like three months. But I've been fishing a little bit. I got my first fish. He's just a little spotted bass. Something light, nothing heavy. Right here on this big rock wall. But what's different about today's fishing trip is that I have a little bit more than just fishing poles. Of course, since we're fishing, I do have some fishing poles. But other here in, in my other rod locker, I also brought my 22, okay? Like, we're, we're prepared today. If the bass don't agree with me, then I'm going to agree with the squirrel. And if we're lucky, we may even get to shoot some off a boat. Which is legal. We can do it. But anyways, I'm going to get back to throwing the jerk bait. It's still pretty early. Still really cold. I think we can still get some fish. Like, the 22 and the squirrel hunting, that's just a backup plan. But if the fish are biting, we may not have to do that today. So anyways, guys, we are main lake and the waves are coming. Along with another boat right over there. And the sun is perfectly in our face. Which, that's good for me and bad for you. Because you can't really hardly see what I'm doing. But it's a big block wall. I got one of my favorite jerk baits ever. Not going to tell you what it is because I don't really... I don't really, I don't really think it matters that much, but I'm going to throw it on out there, let it right up on the thing. This is a super deep one. I believe it's like, what, 15 feet right here, and we're very close to it, but I'm just going to throw it out, jerk a little bit, and then, you know, just jerk a little bit more, and then just jerk it around until I catch a fish, and then that's basically about it. And then every now and again, if I'm not getting bit on the jerk bait, I plan to pull out that right there, which is my jig rod. I've got a little Texas rig on there, and then just flip it a little anomalies in the wall which would be like a big rock fell off or a tree or just something random like that on a big flat wall like this where everything looks the same the bass are really going to key in on the places that's different whether it be a tree in the water or even just a piece of rock that has fell off when everything else is straight that's most likely where the bass will be like right here we have some rock that's fell in i'll cast over towards it maybe make a special cast to it and see if we can pull something off of it And right up here's a little tree. I'll make another cast right up there to it. Be sure to hit that tree pretty thoroughly. And dad's back here. He's fishing a jig. He's just going to target the things that's different that I was originally fishing with jerk bait. Except he's just going to give them a little bit different presentation in the jig form. Oh my goodness, there he is. That's him, baby. That's the stinking groundhog. The groundhog. Dad, there's a groundhog exactly what i wanted how can i do it there he is oh my goodness can i do it okay guys here we go is it gonna be loud is it gonna be too loud if these guys aren't close i'm popping i came here for a groundhog squirrel hunting was just the second option you want me some good It's harder to shoot off a boat than you think. Because you're always moving. Well guys, it seems like that one got away. The first shot, I went for a head shot. I want to just knock him out quick with the 22, get it over with. But then I missed him, okay? Like, that's kind of understandable. I took a rest on my boat seat with the boat going back and forth. And then on the second shot, I just decided I'd go for a quick, easy long shot you know a lot bigger target and apparently i missed again i don't really know i came out here the reason that i actually brought the 22 is because i wanted to kill and eat a groundhog i told y'all i'd do a groundhog catch and cook if i ever could kill another one and i've just not saw any around my house and i knew there's a ton around this lake and well as y'all saw right there he was but i just couldn't connect with him but that's okay because we've not really been here long and we've already saw a groundhog and as for squirrels we're still gonna squirrel hunt that groundhog he may come back out because the last groundhog i shot i actually shot at him and missed him too and then he came back out 20 minutes later so this guy might do the same thing because i don't think you really realized what happened unless maybe i grazed him with the long shot or something but uh right now we're gonna fish a little bit more and then here in a few minutes if nothing else happens we're gonna go ahead and start squirrel hunting because uh we've only caught one fish and it was the one that i didn't even get on camera so we're just gonna keep our eye out Look for that dang groundhog. Hopefully we can kill him and eat him. Because that is the plan. Oh, 
Okay guys, we're just fishing out here and uh, I see a squirrel. It's game time. You know, usually I come out here saying, let's go catch some fish. But today I have a new mentality. Bring home the meat. And in this case, whether it be a groundhog, a wild hog, a squirrel, or a little catfish, I'm coming home with the meat. We got one right up there in the bushes. A squirrel that is, not a groundhog. But I am gonna take him out. That's a fact. I may have to get up on land and walk around for this one because I don't know how steady this boat is. He's right up there. He's right up there somewhere. He's right up in there. Oh, there he is, there he is. He's on that tree. He's on that little tree. Okay, here we go guys, it's time to take the shot. I believe I'm actually gonna have to get up on the bank though because this is getting pretty tough. There's actually about four or five squirrels right in this very small vicinity. So I'm actually gonna go on up there, take a seat for a minute and see if I can't come out with about two or three of them. Right. Here we go. All right boys, now we're clear, here we go. I'm just gonna wait up here for a second. Okay guys, the lake, it didn't exactly turn out the best, but we're down here at a creek and we're kind of gonna do the same thing. I mean, I got my fishing pole right here, got a little cricket on there, perfect for creek fishing. And then I've also got the same M1 carbine that we shot in other day's video. But the creek that we're actually gonna be fishing is the same creek that y'all saw in the M1 carbine video. A lot of y'all said, hey Kendall, why don't you ever fish that creek? And then I was like, I don't know, let's do it. I'm not 100% positive what kind of species live in this creek, but I can imagine, you know, bass, catfish probably a lot of bluegill some green sunfish but i've also heard that there is a ton of musky in here too and i'm gonna tell you right now i know there is because i've saw pictures of them i've even fished for them out of this creek not this particular area but this general creek i have I almost caught one too but guess what i didn't but uh we're getting down here oh 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 dang it oh man well, that's no fun. Thanks a lot, Muddy Bank. That's so sad. But here we are, guys. This water is crystal clear. I can probably cast all over there, down this creek, all this way. This water looks really good. But before we start fishing, let's address something. And that's something that we need to address is actually these hunting backpacks right here. So we actually went out of stock with them about a week ago. And I have had countless amounts of messages saying, dude, are you going to get those back in stock by Christmas? Are you going to get those back in stock? <laughs> and my answer is always the same. I hope so. I'm not positive, but I really do think so. So just an update for you guys. For the backpacks, we are out of stock right now. But I will try my best to let you guys know in a video when they come back in stock. Because I know a ton of people are wanting them. And I want y'all to have them. But a few more things you can actually buy on kindlegrayone.com slash shop is the hoodie you saw me wearing at the lake. The blue and gray one. Another one of our newest releases is this shirt right here. It's called our snow-capped series. Kind of, you know, for winter. I was also wearing that shirt yesterday. I just, it never got warm enough to actually take off my hoodie. And then today I'm actually wearing the SSOG. It's the gray logo on the navy blue shirt. So if you'd like any of those, you already know. kindlegrayone.com slash shop. Support the channel. And get ready for Christmas, baby. It is coming up. But without further ado, boys let's go ahead got a little cricket hopper on there let's start trying to catch us a little fish here we go guys like i said a little cricket hopper that is the, my number one creek fishing bait i have ever discovered if you know a better one guys feel free leave it in the comments but i'm gonna be honest i don't think it can beat this one this one's pretty great now as we walk on the banks you gotta watch out for glass and you know just a bunch of little bottle stuff because this creek it floods a lot and whenever it floods trash goes everywhere which that's fine that's just you know that's just part of old kentucky floods they really do wipe stuff out. Here we go. Just going to throw that cricket hopper out. It has a bill on it, so I can kind of dive it like a crankbait. But one of my favorite ways to do it is just throw it out, let it sit on top of the water, and just twitch it every about two seconds. It makes it look more like a realistic cricket that maybe fell in the water and is just trying to twitch back to bank. We may get us a little spotted bass or maybe a smallmouth. I'm sure they're in here somewhere. We just got to move around and find fish the current breaks, find some spots where maybe a log's blocking the current. Throw it back behind it, see if we can get something there. We'll fish a little bit of everywhere because we got plenty of time today. Not really. We don't have any time. I 
<laughs> okay guys, so I was kind of just, uh, you know, doing a little swarping on a sycamore. Accidentally got it caught up directly above my head and it broke my line. And I don't, I just don't have a knife today. I forgot mine. So one positive about actually fishing on a semi-trashy bank is that you have tons of resources. Resources that can cut line in fact. And this right here is exactly what I'm looking for. Looks like an old piece of maybe a top of a can, something like that. But one thing that it does have is a decently sharp edge right here. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. And a busted up glass bottle will work too, but I'm telling you guys, don't try that. I mean, don't try this either. You can get seriously hurt on anything sharp, especially by the riverbank. And the only reason that I'm doing this is because I just, I straight up don't have anything else to cut it with. But I'm telling you guys, don't do this if you don't have to, because it's really not healthy for anything. But uh, it is kind of decently sharp. And looking around on this cool creek bank, there's a ton of signs of wildlife. Right here, you can look in the sand, you see some, I don't know, coon or possum tracks. I'm gonna say a coon, actually, just because of the size of them. Those, those actually are pretty big tracks. But then if you look right over here, about five feet over, you can see a pretty big deer track right there. And then right there, a massive turkey track. Right there, another massive turkey track. And if you just look around, like you see wildlife has been here. There's some other kind of tracks right down there, but I can't really see them from here. And I'm sure if we look hard enough, we can probably find a bobcat, a fox track, definitely something up there on that mountain. But right down here, right next to the creek, there's just a ton of wildlife. Probably some beavers too, if we look for them. Okay, well, that was depressing. Went out fishing again, didn't get a single bite this time. And I didn't even get to shoot at a groundhog with my gun. I tell you what, guys, I don't even know what to say anymore. We still may see something to shoot at. I, I, I'm not sure. We ain't out of the cornfield yet. We still got pretty high chance. I'm telling you what, guys, I'd love to kill me a good groundhog catch and cook. I've heard they taste so good. Get some groundhog back straps, some deep fry. Those are on my hit list, I'll tell you that. We may just have to go back to the lake and get us one. 5,000 likes, that's all we need. This weekend, we'll head down to the lake. We'll give her another shot. And I'm telling you this time, I'm taking a shotgun. We'll get one. Thank you for watching this episode of Kendall Gray Outdoors. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hashtag Gray Green, hashtag Jesus.